evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Papazani. Here are your top stories this Thursday. In Zimbabwe, a police officer has been murdered by a gold partner in the Gwanda area. The officer was stabbed and then stoned to death by an illegal gold partner on Monday night. The police man identified as 30-year-old Constable Blessing Maminimini was at Pakama Shopping Center when the incident took place. The assailant, identified only as Z, is said to have attacked Constable Mamini Mini about 8.30 and then fled from the scene. Witnesses said the policeman, who was in plain clothes, was restraining some people who were fighting at Crime Matangware nightclub, which is located within the shopping center. The National Police Spokesperson, Chief Superintendent Oliver Mandipaka, confirmed the incident and said the manhunt for the suspect continues as he is still at large. A Zambian man has survived a vicious attack by a lion. The 21-year-old man from Chama in Manchingwa province was saved by three men who overpowered the beast and managed to save his life. The victim, identified as Lazarus Mbewe, was taken to the district hospital where he is battling for his life. The Muchingwa Province Police Commissioner, Sandwa Lungu, confirmed that a lone lion attacked the group of men, including Mr. Mbewe, around 1 a.m. Earlier, I spoke with Mwaka Namwinga, who is based in Zambia, and asked her how regular these sorts of attacks are. They don't happen really often, but I've heard about a couple. I've heard about three or four. I'm sure one or two of them might have been a rumor. So, yeah, I, I, not too often, but they do happen. I've heard about it happening before, usually in rural areas, mostly. You never have lions coming into town, into like city centers and stuff like that. So, And what do you think could be done to prevent further lion attacks in Zambia? Probably we need to have more game ranges because I'm sure the lions come from the game parks. I don't think we have stray lions anymore. So game rangers, we probably need to improve on the security around our game parks. And also probably just, I don't think lions would stray if they had everything they needed where they were. So I'm sure this lion was hunting or something like that. So. We probably just need to look at our game parks a little more carefully. And Marka, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for calling. You're welcome. Yeah. Three Rastafarian parents caused a commotion at Makwapa Primary School in Cholo, Malawi. The angry parents charged into the school, demanding to know why their children were being denied classes. Frightened children in the school ran wild and some even spread rumors that blood suckers had invaded the premises. The school's head teacher apparently banned the Rastafarian children from classes because they had dreadlocks. Innos Chamberenga said that he had acted on instruction from the PTA and was following government policies. Also in Malawi, Concerned parents are pushing education authorities to remove a headmaster who they claim has impregnated several girls. The parents allege that Gibson Maini has fathered children with five young girls since his posting at Ngewarelo Primary School in Ungwe village in 2004. They say the girls have been forced to leave school at a very young age because of the pregnancies. Officials at Eastern Education Division said they will investigate the claims. And in showbiz news, Zambian singer Ariel, whose video Smile Again is to premiere on the BET channel, has released a new track. His collaboration with rapper Derek Boomer is now available. In today's episode of Zim Talk, Liam talks to Zimbabwe's Mr. Eric Knight. He is one of the founders of Visions Radio. Hello and welcome to Zim Talk. Now, if you've been watching ATV this week, you'll know that we have a real passion for music coming out of Africa. We spoke to two up and coming singers this week already. Sharing that passion is the team down at Visions Radio. 
there are Zimbabwe-based radio station who say they want to connect communities in both England and Africa and across the world with Zimbabwe and African music. Uh, joining me today is one of the creators of Visions Radio, Eric Knight. Thanks for joining us, Eric. You're welcome, Liam. Thanks very much. Where did the idea for Visions Radio come about? Uh, Visions Radio is the brainchild of uh, myself and my other uh, former broadcasters that I used to work with back home in Zimbabwe. Uh, the thing is, we believe that we were born broadcasters. We have never done any other job besides radio and television. So when we left Zimbabwe to come uh, overseas um, to look for greener pastures, should I say, uh, the first thing that was on our mind was to continue what we were doing back home, which is obviously broadcasting. And also we were answering the cry of many people that we were interacting with in the United Kingdom who said, you guys, you were doing very well back home. Why can't you perpetuate what you were doing home? Then we said, okay, we'll form a radio station. And uh, the vision was to make sure that we come up with something that is relevant to our community. Thus, a vision radio was born. You've said that a lot of the radio stations that were sprouting up in Zimbabwe, the, the quality wasn't there. How did you use those and then improve upon them? Yeah, that's very true. The thing is, uh, obviously, most uh, radio stations who have the same uh, target audience like ours, Africans, have what we call the, 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 the fear of what we call the red tape. Their programs are not really what they should be because they are afraid of one or two things, political interference and the likes. So we thought at Vision Radio, we have to be free and in its truest sense. And um, obviously we engaged people who had nothing to do with uh, Zimbabwe as well, or Africa, people who are fearless and as our presenters. And also we took advantage of working with uh, very, very uh, skilled at uh, technical people whom we met here in the United Kingdom and uh, we believe uh, obviously those are the ingredients that are required to come up with quality programs. And music is a big part of what you guys do. How healthy would you say the Zimbabwean music scene and the wider African music scene is right now? Oh, that's a very good question, thanks. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm so proud of Zimbabwean talent when it comes to music. Um, you, you being a broadcaster, obviously, I'm sure that you know, you know one or two things, but we are doing very well. For instance, uh, we have people like Oliver Mtukudzi, who is an icon, not just in Zimbabwe, but in Africa. He has actually uh, carried the flag very high, and as a result of that, uh, Zimbabwean music has uh, got a lot of recognition from countries like America, Australia. Hence, we have a lot of bands and musicians who are getting contracts uh, to play abroad. We talked earlier about a band, Makumba, from Zimbabwe, who were on national British TV last night. How important is it for these artists to get that international recognition? There's no more room for limitation. And by interacting with other international musicians, they are going to grow bigger and obviously cast their nets wider and obviously have more uh, followership from all over the world. So I'm, I'm really happy for them. And I hope they are not the first and last group to appear on television. Okay, another thing you've said on your website is as sort of experienced broadcasters, it's really important for you guys to nurture up and coming broadcasting talent. How big a part of things is that for you? Definitely, as I said beforehand, that we are in the process of um, working with the universities that uh, offer broadcasting uh, courses because we believe even if uh, we are doing a very good thing, we won't be there forever. We want the visions radio to grow and to stay forever this is why we call it we call it a visions that name actually implies that the vision is a long it's a it's, it's a long vision that we have and therefore we hope that uh, by uh, engaging younger and fresher broadcasting even if we decide to call it quits one one day that means uh, the vision will still stay alive you leave it in good hands capable hands yes in capable hands <laughs> music's a big part but it's not just that is it it's phone shows, discussion shows, what kind of topics are regularly coming up? Yeah, we have quite a, a large selection, diverse programs should I say. We um, have sports programs, uh, like for instance, uh, recently we were discussing about the Africa Cup of Nations, which is uh, to be held in Africa, the football uh, in South Africa, and uh, we have a very, very uh, committed team who take care of such uh, programs, and we also discuss political issues. Initially, when we started Visions Radio, we were not very eager to delve into politics, uh, but we 
at the end of the day, you can't divorce yourself totally from politics. So right now we have discussion programs that look at program, at uh, politics, social, uh, cultural issues. So really, it's, it's not about music. Vision Radio is uh, like a, a big cake that you can uh, have a piece of whatever you wish to have. With the elections coming up in Zimbabwe next year, what are a lot of your viewers and your listeners, what are they hoping for? Mixed feelings, should I say. Zimbabwean elections are something that many people are looking forward to, owing to the fact that right now, as we speak, uh, the uh, government of national unity are in the process of coming up with a new draft constitution, and hopefully the constitution is going to uh, be structured in a way that it's going to give uh, uh, total democracy to people. So really, people want a change in Zimbabwe, and it can only be done when there is a proper constitution that protects their interests. So, to be honest, as Zimbabweans, we are looking forward to that, and we are hopeful that uh, this time around, uh, whatever the outcome, people will be happy and uh, quite satisfied. Um, you referenced the constitution there. There's some stories coming out of Zimbabwe that, that the government are dragging their feet with it. How hopefully are you of that getting sorted very soon? Yes, actually, uh, my friends or colleagues who are involved uh, in that back home in Zimbabwe, they are saying they're making very steady progress. And uh, for the first time, uh, we are optimistic that uh, it's going to be something worth waiting for. You said you have a sports show as well. I'm sorry to have to bring this up, but how are you and your audience feeling about the Warriors not making it to the Cup of Nations? Oh, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> It was quite a downer, it was quite a disappointment, not just to me as an individual, but to the entire Zimbabweans, because it was a question of uh, so near yet so far. All we needed was uh, to lose at least by one goal, then we would have went through, but we lost 2-0 to Angola. It was disheartening, and right now as I speak to you, I'm telling you, the whole nation is covered by a dark cloud. People don't understand why us every time, but that's such as football anyway. That is football. <laughs> the big story coming out of Zimbabwe at the moment is about match-fixing scandal with the national side and several players looking at life bans. How big a problem is this? Yes, it is a problem and I am not surprised by uh, the news that um, some officials and players are to be banned and some suspended, obviously. It is a disease that we cannot accept in Zimbabwean football. I know Zimbabwe has been going through a lot of economic hardships and it's poverty that has perhaps tempted um, uh, players to be so vulnerable, they are easily bribed. But for the good of the game, I think it's a good it's a good thing that they'll be banned because we don't want uh, to tarnish the the image of the sport of the nation as well just because of few bad individuals. So finally, back to Visions Radio. Where do you see it in five years' time? I mean, you told me that you're hoping to bid for a broadcasting license in Zimbabwe. If that all goes well, what's the big plan? Is it just going to grow and grow? Yes, I. I'm very optimistic. Uh, myself and my co-partner, uh, Ezra Sibanda, we have uh, already uh, made a very steady progress in as far as uh, acquiring what we need to come up with a, a, a very big radio station. And as you rightly said, yes, we applied for a, a broadcasting license. But uh, right now, because of uh, the uh, Zimbabwean uh, um, a constitution that is yet to be finalized. It is impossible for us to be granted a radio license, but we are very hopeful that uh, perhaps in about a year or so, this radio is going to be uh, the biggest, if not uh, one of the biggest radio stations, not just in Zimbabwe, but in Southern Africa, as we broadcast through terrestrial radio stations. Uh, uh, terrestrial means, because right now we are just based on, on, on online or internet broadcasting. So, we, we, we are very hopeful that uh, it will be something to write home about in about five, ten, five years' time. Well, we wish you the best of luck with that. Eric, thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Liam. Today's picture of the day is of the very cool website Chipangura. Why not post your photos on our ATV Facebook page and you could be on the big screen tomorrow. Thank you for watching ATV News and have a pleasant evening.